In today's video, we check out the new pop-up build that is built into the forthcoming version of Elementor 2.4 Pro. So if you've ever wanted to build any kind of pop-up inside Elementor, you've had to use a third-party plugin. However, with the forthcoming version of Elementor Pro 2.4, all of that has been taken care of. And in this video, we're going to take a look at just some of the key features that make this such a really cool inclusion in the new version of Elementor Pro. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added to the channel. Now, this is the beta version of Elementor Pro 2.4, so there may be some little quirks in there, but when it ships, you should find that anything that you might see this discrepancy in this video will all be rectified. So how do we access the new pop-up builder for Elementor Pro? Well, let's just run the dashboard and you'll take a look on the left-hand side. We now have Elementor and we have templates underneath it. Now, templates is where Elementor Pro and Elementor have separated this part of the program out into its own menu entry. You should find now if you are running either the latest version when this ships or the 2.4 beta of Pro and the normal Elementor, you should now see these new options on the left-hand side. So all you need to do is come over, click on pop-ups, and that'll bring you in to this section where we can add our first pop-up. Now you can see we've got the normal template option so we can add new or import a template, or we can add a new pop-up directly. So let's run through that. So you can see if you've used any kind of templating inside Elementor, you're going to be used to the way this sort of element pops up. It asks you to name it, what type of thing do you want to create, and so on. So we say pop-up is fine, we're going to call this pop-up1 and we'll create the template. That'll then take us into Elementor and we can choose any of the predefined templates or we can start from scratch and completely build our own. Now in this video, I'm not gonna concentrate on how we build these. It's all pretty self-explanatory. We'll take one of the templates, take a look at some of the options, but then we'll also take a look at the most important part of this and that's the conditional logic, the triggers and so on that make this such a powerful option. So let's just come down. You can see we've got a range of nice looking different types of pop-ups. You've got things will pop up on screen. You'll have things coming from the left or the right, you know, full screen, all kinds of good things like that. So let's just choose something along the lines of this one. So we'll just click on insert to add that in. Like I say, you could start from a fresh sort of scratch and do it all yourself if you wanted to. Okay, so there's our pop-up. You can see it previews on the screen in front of us, and we've got all the normal editing tools so we can come in, fine-tune, and tweak this to our heart's content to get exactly what we want. So at this point, we can just simply come in and tweak things. So we want to make changes to typography, for example. You can see we can do that, and things will scale, as you'd expect from Elementor, very simple way of working. Now, there's one thing that once you've made some changes to this, you'll notice that all the options on the left-hand side are to do with the element that's selected. So, for example, we've got this text area, this sort of image area. We can select the entire sort of placeholder, columns, rows, and so on. But how do we get back to the settings for the actual pop-up itself? You can see we click anywhere around, it just takes us back to choosing the widgets. It's a little bit hidden, and hopefully they'll make this a little easier, but if we come down to the little settings icon in the bottom left hand corner, click on there, that will open back up the pop-up settings and we can then continue on to make changes to the actual pop-up itself, not the design side of things. So if we just take a quick overview, you can see we've got things to deal with the layout. So we can choose the position, we can fit the content, the width based upon pixel values and vertical width values and so on. We can also do things like show buttons after a certain period of time so we can stop people clicking away from things immediately. I'd say once this actually ships or you can access the beta version, take a look through. There's nothing in there that's particularly complex. Again, we can come up to the general settings and we can title this. We can specify whether it's draft, pu published, and so on. Preview settings, we can assign dynamic content to this if we wanted to. We can come in and style things, the overlay, the close button, and so on. So all the kind of things you'd expect inside Elementor and Elementor Pro to be able to control and design the sort of object that you create on, in this case, the pop-ups. Now, the magic of this comes in in the same way as we set up conditions with templates when we actually go to publish this. So we come to the publish option. That will then open up the publish settings. And this is where you've got the real power of the pop-ups inside Elementor Pro. Now, to kick things off, we've got three different sections on the left-hand side that allow us to set up the parameters to actually work with the pop-up. Now, the conditions is something that if you work with templates in Elementor Pro, you're going to be accustomed to this. So you can simply come in, add your condition, and choose whether you want to include or exclude. And you can see we can do things like the entire site, the archives, singular, and so on. And if you've got more templates and so on created this, you've got WooCommerce installed, you'll have more options in here. 
So like I say, nothing you haven't seen before, nothing that's unusual to you if you use those templates. However, the things we are looking at are the triggers and the advanced rules. So we leave this set to entire site, that's fine. Cut out the triggers, and you can see we now have a range of different triggers to specify when this will actually be triggered and display on your site. We can do things like on page load, on scroll, on scroll to element, click on interact and inactivity, on page exit intent and so on. And we can just simply enable or disable these. And when we do that, you can see it brings up some additional options based upon the trigger that we choose. So for example, we can say the scroll direction, we can set that to up or down and how far through our page before this is triggered. With the on page load, we can specify how long you wait before this is triggered. And you can do things like on scroll to element. And again, you can see if we've got classes in there, we can assign the class we want to use. And we can just get control over when you actually reach a certain element on the page, it will then trigger it. So all pretty cool. Advanced rules gives us even more options. So you can see show after X, X page views. Again, if we enable that, we can specify how many pages need to be viewed before this is triggered and shown. Uh, and same after sessions, so we can specify this will only show up after a couple of sessions when the customer comes back and visits a couple of times, that kind of thing. And again, the same with show at X times when arriving from a specific URL, so you could set something up. So let's just say, for example, you were using some kind of um, sort of advert online via Twitter or Facebook or something along those lines. You could pop that URL in there, and then you'd have a specific pop-up based upon the URL that the visitor come from. This is a great way of then creating very targeted pop-up advertising. So a really cool advanced feature to have access to straight out of the box with this new pop-up builder. And again, you can see we've got show when arriving for, from, and you can see we've got things like search engines, external links, internal links, and so on. So you really can get right down and get some real granular control over how and when you show different pop-ups. I think this is really, really cool. Now for our example, just to see how this works, let's keep this really, really simple. Let's just disable all the advanced, make sure there's another triggers, and we'll just use a simple condition. We'll say the entire site, the trigger on page load, we'll choose that option, and we'll say after two seconds. So it's a really simple trigger. After two seconds on any page of our site, this pop-up will show. Hit next. You can see that'll take us through to any advanced rules we may want to sort of show. So we can specify this would only show on a particular type of device. We might not want to show it on tablets or desktop. So we'll just disable that. We'll keep this really, really simple. Save and close. And that's it done. So in the same way as with templates, we've saved that, we've set the conditions, the triggers, all the things to specify when this pop-up will be used. So we just jump over to our test page now. We'll refresh this. And after two seconds, we should then see that our pop-up will appear. And there we go, there's our pop-up, which allows us now to interact, do whatever we want. We can close that down. So that works exactly as you'd expect it to. The fact it's now built directly into Elementor Pro, I think is really cool. It gives us the ability to create great looking pop-ups with some real advanced triggers and functionality all inside the nice design way that we can work inside Elementor. So you're used to working with it. Now you just have a ton more options to specifically target your pop-ups. Now, before I wrap this up, there are a couple of things that I want to show you. So we're gonna jump back over to the dashboard, jump back over to our pop-up settings. I'm gonna to come to the advanced tab. Now, normally in advanced, you don't really have a huge amount of additional options. You have things like your margins and padding and so on. But with the pop-up settings, we do have a couple of things that gives us even more control over our pop-up. So you can see we've got things like prevent closing on overlay, automatically close after a number of milliseconds, disable page scrolling so we can stop anyone scrolling in the background with our pop-up on top, and avoid multiple pop-ups. So you might have the user like sort of signed in and you've got a trigger for that. You might have a user going to a certain page and a trigger for that. This will then stop you having a problem with multiple pop-ups opening on the same page if multiple sort of criteria are met to show multiple different pop-ups. Now that's a mouthful. So you've got additional controls there which you can target to make sure that your pop-up works the way you expect it to. So tie that in to all the different conditions and the triggers and so on. And I think you have a very powerful way of dealing with creating pop-ups. So with this new feature that's going to ship with Elementor Pro 2.4, what do you think of this pop-up builder? Can you see yourself using it? Is it going to replace some other pop-up builders you've been using in the past? Let me know in the comments section below. Let's get a discussion going on what you think of these new features that are rolling out thick and fast in 2019 into Elementor and Elementor Pro. I'd love to get your feedback. 
Speaking of feedback, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But let me know in the comment section below why you didn't enjoy it. As always, all the links for this and anything else we use on the channel are in the description below. They're affiliate links, so it gives a small percentage back to the channel, but costs you no more money and your support is massively appreciated. Well, as always, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.